together. We get to learn. Isn't that nice? Yeah, it is. So, today we're going to start talking about doing research. It's going to be great. It's important to be looking out for good evidence. What makes evidence good? That's the question. I'm going to walk you through a quick tutorial about how to discover good evidence. In fact, that's what we're going to be talking about all this week. So you can expect a couple more videos this week talking about what makes good evidence, but I don't want to spoil it. So let's get right into it. Okay, we're going to be doing research this week and we're going to be using the ropes method to identify good supporting evidence. So let's talk a little bit about what ropes stands for. So you might be asking yourself, what is ropes? It is an acronym that was created by the English teachers at Unity to help students identify useful and supportive evidence in their research projects. So we're going to talk a little bit about what ropes stands for. ROPES is an acronym that stands for Relevant, Original, Precise, Expert, and Sufficient. If you can find evidence that meets all five of these criteria, then there's a very good chance that the evidence in your research project is going to be really good evidence. So we're going to start today by focusing on relevant evidence. Now, relevant evidence is anything that is closely connected or appropriate to what is being argued in your thesis. Uh, as long as the evidence is related to the claim, it is relevant. You also want to make sure that your evidence proves the claim. So how do you know if your supporting evidence is not relevant? It's quite simple. If your supporting evidence does not help you answer your research question, then it probably is not relevant. So make sure every single piece of evidence that you use on your project relates back to your research question. Let's look at a good example. If we're claiming that Trump's border wall is getting America nowhere on border security, then we need a relevant piece of supporting evidence to back that up. So if you look at this supporting evidence, it is definitely and clearly relevant because it relates back to the claim about border security and it clearly shows how a majority of undocumented immigrants come from visa overstays as opposed to people entering the country illegally. So this evidence helps us prove the claim that a border wall would not improve border security because it clearly shows that the majority of undocumented immigrants are from visa overstays and not border crossings. So this is a really good example of evidence that both relates to the claim, it is appropriate, it is connected to the claim, but it also would help answer the research question about whether or not a border wall along the American and Mexican border would increase uh, border security. So now let's take a look at a bad example of relevant evidence. So in this example, we have the same claim, but the evidence that this person used to support the claim is actually quite irrelevant because it really doesn't prove the claim at all. Now it does mention the border, but that doesn't make it appropriate or connected to the claim necessarily because it doesn't help prove the claim. So keep this in mind when you're trying to find evidence that answers your research question because you want to include evidence that is related to and connected to and appropriate to whatever thesis you end up making in the end. Okay, that's it. Relevant evidence. So as you are doing your research, you need to be looking for evidence that is related, connected, or appropriate to your topic, to your research question. At this stage of the game, we haven't written a thesis statement yet, we don't have 
supporting claims. We're only looking at doing research for our topics, trying to answer our research question, and paying attention to evidence that is relevant, that is uh, related to or appropriate in the context of our topics and our questions. So, homework for tonight is going to be the relevant evidence worksheet. Make sure you uh, completely finish that assignment and turn it in before midnight tonight. And if you have any questions, as always, please shoot me an email or attend the office hours that I hold every day from 2 to 3 p.m. on Google Hangouts. Okay, good luck. We'll see you tomorrow.